So let's have a look at the Move Tool Context Toolbar on the iPad when running Affinity Designer. Here's a quick step-by-step -step tutorial on what they all mean, along with short video examples. Now you've only got a few along the bottom there, and this is when you're in the default move mode, if you're trying to move units around. You've got Add to Selection, Select Under, Select Inside, About Center, and the six other fairly obscure ones sitting next to them. Now let's see what they all are. Add to Selection. Now that's simple as, well, select the yellow speech bubble, now tap Add to Selection, then tap the arrow, then tap the heart, tap the circle, and you can see that they're all selected. Select Under. When enabled, tapping on an area where two objects overlap will select the object that is underneath. But the trick with this is sometimes you've got to tap more than once. Now you can see I've got select on down the bottom there. I'm going to select the red triangle beneath the green circle. Now to do that, I've tapped on once on the green circle, that's selected it, but I want select under. And there it is. Another tap, and you've got the red triangle beneath it. Select inside. When enabled, tapping on an area where an object is nested inside another object will select the nested object. Now we're looking at the green circle with the yellow square in it, and you can see in the layers panel that the yellow square is actually nested inside the green circle, not just placed above it where it can be visible, it's actually nested in there. Now you could of course select it from within the layers panel, but sometimes that's just not convenient. We'll deselect everything so we know it's not there. Now select inside, turn that on down the bottom, you can see it there. Select inside is on. Tap the green area and nothing happens and you think, whoops, what's going on? But what we've got to do is tap the yellow square and then it selects it. And you can see there that it's selected it. Now, why is that different than the other one? Because if select inside is not turned on, let me deselect that. Turn off select inside. And we have nothing happening there. Touch the yellow and you get the green. And you think, oh, how do I get to the green? How do I get to the yellow? No. Turn on select inside. Tap the yellow. And there you have it. And now you can do what you like with the yellow square. That is Select Inside. About the center. When enabled, it sets the center of the selected object or objects as the anchor for that selection. Let's have a look at this. Now we're going to look at the diamond, the green circle with the yellow square inside it. That's quite a complex one because any other one will simply show you it's spinning on its own axis. But when you've got a complex object like that and you want to rotate it, you need the whole lot to rotate. So let's select that and that. You can see it's all selected. Now about the center is that one there. Let's tap that so it's turned on. Now when you rotate it, you can see the whole thing is rotating nicely around the center. Let's turn it off. However, you will get complex shapes and you can look at that and think, now where is the center of that? Let's try that one. About the center. And you can see it's rotating and the degrees are showing in the little black pop-up box. And there you go.
about the centre. Cycle selection box. After reshaping, rotating or shearing the object, this option toggles the selection box between a base box, which honours the transform, regular bounds, which ignores the transform, or planar bounds, fitting to an isometric grid if it's active. Now, I won't do the isometric grid at the moment, but let's have a look simply at the star. Now we've got the star and its default, mo uh, default mode um, is regular bounds. And you can see that it's at regular bounds. So let's move it a little bit. What's that? About 45 degrees, give or take. Now, the one we're looking at, cycle selection box. In the little group of six, it's the first one on the top left. And you can see it says regular bounds. Now, the star's moved, you can see that, but the box is a regular box. Let's cycle it again. Now, there it is, it's honouring that. It's gone to where we moved it to. Let's put it back, and you can move it again. There we go. Slightly off centre, but there it's, well, it's nearly, um, yes, that's nearly 45 degrees, isn't it? Let's move it to nearly 90 degrees, 89, oh, 90 point something. That's pretty good. Now, let's move it back to there. And there's our bounding box back there. The star has been moved 90 degrees. Enable Transform Origin. This displays a movable rotation centre about which the shape can be rotated. Now, in the little group of six down the bottom there, on the context toolbar, you'll see what appears to be like a crosshair sights, and which is exactly what it's going to be. Now, you might want to rotate something in a manner that's not quite usual. So let's set that on and you can see that there in the star the purple star there's a center point okay that's the normal center point we can move that around put that up there it's at about one degree that's okay you can you can set that in the transform studio if you like but what we want to do is not have the usual thing but by holding down your pencil you can move that center point to the top so now when you rotate it, it rotates the whole star. It's not rotating <laughs> on the center point, it's rotating on the new center point. If you're not happy, move it down there. And you can now see it a little easier. And now it's rotating from that, that is the center point. You can put it back and it snaps to the grid. You can see it snaps to the center point there. Let's see what that looks like over here. We've got a group of them selected. Turn on the center point. You can see the center point there. Now, what if we want to rotate that from down on the point of the red diamond? And you can see it's rotating on the point of the red diamond. Not the centre point, but the red diamond point. There we go. We'll just leave that where it is. Deselect everything so there's no inadvertent accidents. Show alignment handles. When selected, displays alignment handles at the centre and edges of the selected object. You can drag the handles to position the centre or edges of the selected object in line with this guide. So let's go back to our favourite, the star. Star selected. Tap on 
show alignment handles. And you can see that now that there's little handles pointing at the at the edges of the bounding box. And you can see that the center is up there. There's there's our edges right. It's, it's a bit hard to see, but you can move that out there. You can move that out there. You can use that one. You can see the guide. You want it exactly in line with the bottom of that circle. And there it is. Maybe we want it exactly against the edge of the circle. Move it to the edge of the circle, and there it is. So you can see that you can do those sorts of things. There's the center over there. You can see that's moved that just to there, and that's in line with there. So you can you can use those. Because I dragged the dot, you can see that. Okay, put that back. Use the little triangle and it moves the whole thing. So don't confuse the bounding box dots with the triangles. Lock children. When enabled, any child object will remain fixed in size and position when its parent object is transformed, moved, rotated, etc. So let me demonstrate this. The perfect child one we've got here is the green circle with the yellow square inside. Let's select the green circle and by way of demonstration, I'll move it, transform it slightly. Now you can see it, the whole thing transforms in size, including the square inside it. Let's go back there. Now, locking children is on. The yellow square is a child of the green circle. Now it's locked in size and position. We can transform the green circle and the yellow square stays in position. That's how that one works. Hide selection while dragging. When enabled, the object's selection box is temporarily hidden when transforming the object. If this option is off, the selection box remains visible during transformation. The selected behavior persists across all objects unless it is manually switched. So what does this mean? Let's select the circle. There's our circle selected still rotated from before. You can see the rotation handle is round at 90 degrees. But that doesn't matter. If we move that, eh, the bounding box, selection box stays on. But let's turn on hide selection while dragging. And that's that one there. The row of six across the bottom and it's the bottom center one. Now when the bounding box is on, the selection box, but if we move it, you can see it still comes up with the alignment marks, but the surrounding box is no longer visible. And that stays there while that's on. Let's try that one. And they don't show either. That can be very handy because sometimes when you want to move those things, the selection box can become quite a nuisance. Transform objects separately. When selected, where multiple objects are selected, they can be resized, rotated and sheared independently of each other instead of transforming the whole lot with the bounding box. Let me demonstrate with the heart, the arrow and the speech box. We'll select those. Now you can see the three of the objects are selected there. What happens if I rotate them? The whole thing rotates. Let's put it back to where it was and select transform objects separately. Now they all transform, 
but they do it separately. Click on there and you can see that the yellow speech box is the one at the top. So that's the controlling object. Now if we move it, you can see that each one moves separately, independently of the other ones. Are they all still selected? No, because you can see that I didn't select them there. But now they're all selected. The button is still pressed, transform objects separately, but the heart is the controlling object. And you can see what happens when I do that. So select the object you want as the controlling object, then tap the transform object separately button and they will do it. Unselect that, deselect all those, and there we are. Under Preferences and Tools, the Move Tool Aspect Constrain option can be used to specify whether or not to constrain the aspect ratio by default when resizing. The option can also be set to automatic, letting the software decide based on the selected object. And you'll probably find that it's selected by default to automatic. That's all for the Move Tool exercise. As always, the more you use these options, the more familiar they become. When you subscribe to my channel, remember to tap the thumbs up icon for a like and the bell to get reminders when I upload new videos. And if you'd like to be a part of the Affinity Tutorial community on my channel, you'll find the option on my channel homepage. Just click on Community if you see it there. It's available on the website and the iOS devices, but it's not available on the iPad yet for some reason. There's my Instagram hashtag and Twitter, Twitter name and Instagram where you can also find me. Thanks for watching. Much appreciated.